I'm Meg Tucker from 100.7 Cruise FM. Welcome to Sliced Red Deer episode two. It's unbelievable that we are at season three of Sliced. We are here in the RDC kitchen where two local chefs are battling it out head to head. Oh, one of them is moving on to the finale March 21st. They will be cooking their hearts out tonight using three mystery ingredients, which we will find out later. Welcome to Sliced Red Deer. It's time to meet the two guys who will be battling it out head to head, cooking up a storm on sliced red deer. Let's meet our chefs. First up, from Bistro on Gates, it's Chef Jean. <laughs> Come closer. Growing up, my mom was a great cook and I've always liked cooking. I've always worked in restaurants and now I own my own place. Darcy came into my restaurant one day and said, we're doing sliced red deer. He explained it was for the women's outreach, so I didn't hesitate. I said yes right away. They help people that fall in the gap where the government don't help. So I think it's a great cause. They help women, children, and I'm always for that. And of course, you Thank need you. A, you need uh, someone who's going to battle it out with you. Next up, we've got Bryson from Leah's Bar and Grill. It was the only thing I ever wanted to do when I was a kid. Uh, my grandmother was a home ec teacher. Um, she was one of the original, and uh, both my grandmothers were amazing cooks. They'd take the simplest ingredients and just amplify the flavors. So I knew when I was very young that I was going to be a chef. We love to take every opportunity we can um, to be part of the community whether it's us going to f fundraising events or, or you know, going out and, and promoting our restaurant. Uh, it's important as a restaurant to be a part of the community. Every city, I think, needs a place like that for all the different programs they do and all the different things that they do within the community. I, I think you know, it's just a very important part of, part of Red Deer. Chefs, it's time to find out what is under this lid. This is the reason you're all here tonight, to find out which three mystery ingredients you're cooking with. So keep in mind, you will be judged on taste and creativity and how well you incorporate these three mystery ingredients into your main dish. Gentlemen, are you ready to find out what is beneath this lid? Yes. You look nervous, but I am too, that's fine. Here we go, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right, you are dealing with a whole coconut. You are dealing with chocolate balsamic vinegar, rich and robust and syrupy and thick in many, many ways you can use it. I'm not gonna give them away because you're the chefs. And last but not least, have y'all heard of tahini? Tahini, sesame paste, coconut, balsamic, tahini. Chef Jean, Chef Bryson, are you ready? Yeah. 75 minutes on the clock. Your time starts now. I'm not sure about that coconut. Tahini is probably the only one I'm worried about. Uh, <laughs> just because it's such a strong flavor. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I can use that. is heating up in the kitchen so now it's time to meet our judges first up we've got Dylan K from Redmore Smokery hi. hi Dylan you won Slice Red Deer your restaurant won last year which is awesome and Food Network named Redmore Smokery one of the top 10 barbecue restaurants in Canada that's huge welcome Pete Sock we love you you've been here many times before not only did you win Sliced season one but you went on to win Chopped Canada Congratulations, owner of Sopir Restaurant, welcome. And we're on your turf here, Mr. This is Garnet Shetler. Garnet is the instructor right here at RDC for the Cook Apprentice Program. Garnet, you just became certified. 
Yeah, I was in Vancouver a couple of years ago and I took a five month course to become a certified chef de cuisine. Very cool. Well, we've got very top talent here for the judges. So guys, they are going to be judged on three things, taste, creativity, and how well they incorporate the three mystery ingredients, coconut, dark, balsa dark chocolate balsamic, and tahini. Quick, dark uh, balsamic, dark chocolate bar balsamic. The dark, dark chocolate uh, goes, I think it go really well with like a curry spice, something a little bit spicy, chocolate and heat tend to go well with each other. Awesome, coconut, Pete? Holy coconut, <laughs> how are you gonna break it? Right. No idea. <laughs> how do you open it? Uh, Garnet, what do you think about tahini, explain. Well, it's very bitter, uh, it's a great ingredient, but I'm interested to see how they're gonna balance it with the other ingredients and still allow us to taste it. The sesame, sesame yeah. paste. Guys, we are in for a true treat. Let's get back to the action. I'm wondering. Once we taste it in the end, we might have to add something to balance it out. We're here for the women's outreach, but let's take a moment and watch a video that outlines some of the support groups that the women's outreach offers the community. Support groups bring people together who are facing similar challenges, whether it is domestic violence, relationship problems, loss, or major life changes. It can be helpful just getting to talk with other people who are in the same situation and provide support to help you cope better and feel less isolated as you make connections with others. At the outreach, we deliver four groups. Women's Drop-In. This group is designed for women who are affected by domestic violence, which provides education information and strategies for coping with abuse. Boundaries, this group provides support to women wanting to learn about creating or maintaining healthy boundaries. Participants will learn new tools to identify and assert healthy boundaries in their lives. Kid Power, this group has two components, a play therapy group for children who have been affected or witnessed domestic violence, and a separate educational group for parents to learn strategies and skills as the family moves towards healing. Men's Support Group, is a program that focuses on therapeutic change for men who want to be a part of a healthy relationship and have a non-abusive future. The group addresses issues of abuse in intimate relationships and offers methods of coping with its effects. We are here, of course, for the Women's Outreach, and we're joined by our friend Darcy Willette, Fund Development Officer for the Women's Outreach. Of course, uh, we just watched that video that shows the support groups. How do the groups get funded? Uh, a lot of our groups are funded, you know, government funding, grants, um, some fundraising like the events that we're at now to right. help support them. And how do people donate? How do people support? Um, go to our website is the best way, you know, womensoutreach.ca. You can even pick which program that you would like, uh, you know, funding or donations to go to. And then this, of course, Slice Red Year is a big one, but you've got other events. What's coming up? Uh, well, we'll have our golf tournament in the summer. So we do a golf tournament every year. A lot of fun. We, we've been lucky every year. The weather's been beautiful. And if anyone's looking to sponsor or to do a little bit of golf and in support of us, give me a call. Awesome. Again, the website? Womensoutreach.ca. Thank you, Darcy. See ya. All right, let's get back to the kitchen and check out how these chefs are doing with these three mystery ingredients. Chef John, things are looking amazing. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. It's hot in here. It is hot in here, but all for a good cause. How are you feeling about dark chocolate balsamic and what are you doing with it? It's uh, part of the glaze now on my beef, so. Glaze on the beef, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm glad it was, they gave us, from what I think, pretty easy ingredients oh. to work with, so. <laughs> oh, he thinks they're easy ingredients. Yeah, I'm gonna let well. you get back to it. Okay, thanks, thanks Meg. Chef Bryson, I am ducking down and looking at the coconut. How are you feeling? Uh, good. You're feeling good. good. You are definitely very uh, deep in focus. What are you going to do with that mystery ingredient? Uh, I'm going to take this with some peppers and um, 
Maybe it with some squid, so yeah, I'm gonna fry it down and add some uh, sweetness to it and some acid to it. Yeah. And then hopefully it'll go good with the calamari. And the dark chocolate balsamic, what are you gonna do with that? Uh, I have a wine reduction that I incorporate oh. into, so uh, it just gave a nice flavor. Okay. She's gonna use that on the plate as well. Are you feeling composed? Are you are you worried about the clock? Uh, you know, a little. Uh, I think we, we have everything pretty much together though, so um, hopefully everything tastes good and it, and it works out. Awesome, I'm gonna let you get back to it. Good job. The chefs are hard at work and it's time to check in with the judges. Have you guys observed them cooking yet? Because it's getting hot in this kitchen. Uh, I think that they're going to be using the, the, the secret ingredients probably to, to, to their fullest potential tonight. Uh, it's what we really want to see. Um, I'm really interested to see how maybe they, they, they use the coconut. Uh, the, I'm, I'm kind of stumped by that one. Coconut would be tough. What about tahini? I mean, what are you seeing? What are you seeing with Chef Jean and Chef, uh, Chef I Bryson? See, I see Chef Jean uh, put like half a bottle of tahini in that. Okay. So I uh, have no so you're idea nervous, what make. is what you're saying. Yeah, it's one of those things. If you're making hummus, you can use quite a bit, but if you're not making hummus, back up a little bit. It's strong. It's strong. It it, it's a tough. It's a tough ingredient. Garnet, dark chocolate balsamic. I'm hearing is being used in a glaze. Simple way to go. It's probably the way to go, but you got to be careful uh, because incorporating your sweet ingredient into a savory dish is always tough. You don't want to overdo it. Right, and they have to taste them, but they can't overpower it. So exactly. we're gonna get back to the action in the kitchen and we'll see how those chefs are doing. <laughs> chefs, you have 30 minutes left. Oh! some red wine vinegar and uh, balsamic. Yeah. I reduced it down with a little bit of garlic. It looks nice, it's looking pretty. It's got it, you got right now. You go see mom? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, where's mom? Safe visitation provides children experiencing domestic violence with a safe and neutral environment to visit with their non-custodial parent. Safe visitation services help children maintain relationships with both their parents while addressing safety concerns for all family members. This program is delivered in a safe, neutral and child-focused setting where visits can take place under the supervision of our fully trained staff. Where supervised visitation is not ordered, but there is a continued exposure to abuse for the children, monitored exchange program may be an option. The purpose of monitored exchange is to provide a safe, child-friendly place to exchange children and protect them from ongoing conflicts with their parents. The long-term goal of monitored exchange is to have each family develop new skills and strategies so that a third party or staff member is no longer needed when parent and children connect. The Outreach Centre offers a comprehensive supervised visitation and monitored exchange program that provides a safe and supportive environment for families. The goal of each program is to strengthen the parent-child bond and enable families to promote and nurture positive relationships. Our program provides a safe and positive way for children to visit with their parents as their families go through a difficult or transitional time. We are having so much fun in the kitchen tonight, joined again by Darcy from Women's Outreach. No denying it, this is a fun event and mm -hmm. it's a fun night, but we're here for a very serious reason. How do you, as fund development officer, how do you find that mix? How do you mix them to, you know, mix them together and still find that balance? Well, with Sliced, we were lucky. Um, you know, there's so many food related, foodie people in Red Deer. There's some amazing restaurants that people may have never ever been to. Yep. Uh, when we attach it to an event, we raise a bit of money for ourselves and a lot of awareness, you know, around the event. Um, it was a perfect marriage. Like it was just, uh, we never expected it to get to this point. It is, it's been a perfect blend for sure. And how do people get involved and how do people donate? Uh, always, always on our website, womensoutreach.ca. You can pick the program that you want to have the funds to or pick events that we do and just come out and have some fun. Awesome, let's get back to it.
check in with the judges. You guys have had a chance to see Chef Jean and Chef Rice in cooking. What are you seeing? What are you observing, Dylan? So I, I'm seeing both, both teams right now are using the dark chocolate balsamic vinegar as a, a reduction for the beef. Um, is that an easy out? I think I think the balsamic reduction is an easy out. As soon as somebody hears balsam, they immediately think reduction, which it's 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 flavorful. It's, it's wonderful. Delicious. I, yeah. Okay. So, uh, but I uh, think there could have been maybe some more unique ways to go about it. All right, tahini. What are we doing with it? You, we, you know? Tahini. Uh, Chef Bryson is uh, using it, putting an accent taste to a gravy. Okay. So that's nice, giving a nutty okay. sort of flavor, and uh, the color just blends into uh, that gravy, anyways. Okay. Chef. Jean is um, using it in some sort of, he told me it was kind of style of ratatouille, which is just stewed vegetables. Okay. Does it have the potential to be too much? I mean, it is because it's strong. Are you feeling like they're on track? Uh, I think they are. It's pretty subtle and it's more of an aromatic flavor as opposed to a taste bud flavor. Garnet, question for you because you judge every day. You're the instructor here at RDC. What's it like to judge a competition like this? Well, as an instructor, I'm always looking uh, at my students, watching them, and making sure that they're using proper technique. And uh, the hardest thing about judging is to uh, witness someone perhaps not using a technique in the right way, and then you know not being able to say anything to them, at least until the end of the competition. You know, I always make sure I walk over and I say, you know, this is the proper way to do this. Right. Um, but I can't say anything until the end, right? You guys have your work cut out for you. <laughs>
Yeah, overall not bad. Garnet, what are you, are you feeling? Are you tasting the mystery ingredients? Do you have a question or a comment for Chef Sean? Chef Sean, I, uh, I really enjoy that the dish is seasoned very well. Um, I am having a bit of a hard time though finding the, the taste of the tahini in the, in the vegetable ratatouille that you made. Um, I, like the, uh, I like the ratatouille, it tastes great, but I'm just not really getting the tahini flavor there. Thank you, Chef Sean. Thank you. Next up, Chef Bryson, please present your dish to the judges. Uh, I have a uh, grilled sirloin. Uh, I made a chocolate uh, balsamic reduction, and then I did a tahini gravy. Uh, we have some uh, fried calamari, uh, and then uh, topped with some uh, coconut and uh, red pepper. Thank you. Judges? The balsamic overpowered it. Yeah. You got, I, the, you got the coconut. I don't get the gravy at all. It's kind of just on top. Judges, you've had a chance to taste Chef Bryson's dish. Any questions? Dylan? Uh, Chef Bryson, your your beef is cooked perfectly. It's, it's it, it, very, very well. Uh, Having said that, though, I do think it could have had a little bit of... Did you season it at all? I lightly seasoned it, yeah. I think I could have used a little bit more. Even just salt and pepper would have, would have went a long way. Um, the, uh, the balsamic was wonderful. Uh, could taste the chocolate very nicely. Uh, but it did overpower the uh, gravy that was on top of it. Okay. Pete? Um, nice presentation. It would be nice to have a little bit of a color contrast with something green or just to cut out the uh, the color. The steak was cooked perfectly, a nice medium rare, and when I saw you making the coconut shreds, I didn't think it was gonna work, but it actually worked really well. Uh, nice and seasoned, and the coconut was there, right in your face. Thanks, Pete. Garnet, comments or questions for sure. Chef Bryson? A couple of things. Um, first thought, right off the bat, I find that the proportion of the dish is a little bit off. Uh, quite a bit too much couscous in, in, in terms of uh, comparing with the beef and, and the squid. Um, and I, while I do taste the coconut, it's definitely there. Um, I would have liked to see it used in a bit more clever way than just julienne and on top of the, on top of the squid. Thank you, chefs. Uh, you guys did a great job tonight. Uh, the judges now have to deliberate. And chefs, you can head to the break room. It was definitely a lot stress, more stressful than I thought it would be. The, the time just flies. The whole day, I thought. It was yeah, long. it's more. It's more the time flying than anything else. Seventy-five minutes. Where did it go? Yeah. It felt like twenty minutes, really. What was the tough ingredient, toughest ingredient for you? The tahini. I thought it would have a stronger flavor than that, like in my ragu. Yeah. It just disappeared, and I used a whole jar in there. Yeah. And it just went. Yeah. Where'd it go? I couldn't taste it. And one of the judges said he couldn't taste it either. My, my coconut, it was, uh, when I tried to cook it down, it was taking mm -hmm. a lot longer to soften. Yeah. So I was worried it was going to be too crisp and that that, that that would take away from it. So I'm hoping that panda. But we'll see. They said both good things about your dish and good things about mine. And Yeah, I'm worried I used too much of that couscous. But I, I, I just grabbed something at the last minute to scoop it and put it on there, and I didn't really realize how much it was. How big it is? In yeah. So. The judges have had a chance to taste the dishes. Let's check in. Do you guys feel that they've used the mystery ingredients? The whole coconut, the dark chocolate balsamic, the tahini, and go. Discuss. Uh, so I, I really feel that um, maybe Chef John's this is missing in, with the uh, secret ingredients. I'm, I'm not really getting anything from that dish. And I feel that uh, Chef Bryson hit some of the secret ingredients, but maybe overdid it. Yes, one overpowered the other for sure, right? I don't get the tahini at all, although it looked uh, and sounded like a delicious ingredient. Uh, the tahini gravy, it was just completely overpowered by the... Um, the balsamic chocolate. reduction, right? You guys definitely picked out things that were strong and things that you liked. Do you think the mystery ingredients got them in the end? Was it was it was it that? I, I really think that um, coming into this competition, you have to really look on how we're scoring things. 
the heaviest weight in the competition is those Mr. Ingredients. And if we can't taste them, your score just drops. So you've got your taste and your creativity, which we've seen, and it's those Mr. Ingredients. Having deliberated, having talked about it all, judges, have you reached a decision? We have. Yeah. Okay. When we come back, we find out who advances to the finale of Slice Red Beer. What a night it's been. We have cooked, we've got two chefs. We've got Bistro and Gates, Chef Jean. We've got Chef Bryson from uh, Leah's Bar and Grill. You are all cooking your hearts out, all for sliced red deer. Only one of you can go on to the finale. Are you ready to find out who the winner is? You've cooked with three mystery ingredients, whole coconut, dark chocolate balsamic, tahini, 75 minutes, you did it. We're about to find out the winner. Can I get a drum roll? And the winner, Sliced Red Deer episode two is... Leah's Bar and Grill! <laughs> Chef Bryson, congratulations. The judges had a tough decision tonight. They have reached their winning decision. Guys, how did you do it? Um, so we we thought long and hard about it, and it was not. Uh, it was an extremely close battle between both, and it all came down to those mystery ingredients. Uh, chefs, I just want to say thank you. First of all, uh, the the what we ate tonight was wonderful, and it was extremely close. Uh, the the mystery ingredients we couldn't taste any of the mystery ingredients in your, in your dish, Chef Jean, but um, they, they dominated a little bit in um, Chef Bryson's. So for the reasons that you gave, unfortunately, Chef Jean, you did have to be sliced, but we just want to say what a wonderful job you did. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. And to our winner, Chef Bryson. You know what this means, buddy? It means you're going to the finale of Sliced Red Deer. <laughs> Leah's Bar and Grill. Uh, exciting, nerve-wracking. Um, it's not like anything I've ever done before, for sure. It's definitely gonna be a challenge, and it, you know, like I've heard before, it's, uh, it's it comes down to the flavors, how you can incorporate them, the judges' palate. There's just so many different dynamics. It could go either way. Thank you so much for your support, all for the Women's Outreach. We have had another amazing night. Darth? Thank you to both restaurants for participating this year. Uh, if you wish to find out more or make a donation, go to womensoutreach.ca. Yes, and to watch more sliced episodes, head to Shaw TV Red Deer's website. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Meg Tucker. Thanks, Darth. Good night. Slice has been brought to you by these sponsors.